Okay, what's going on, guys? And what's your brand new episode of Energize? Ross, introduce the guest, man. Today, we have the hosts of the UFC Fight Pass podcast that is known as the Two Straws. We have Angela over Kill Hill. No woman has spent more time in the octagon than that woman right there. And we have Jessica Penne, former strawway title contender. Ladies, how are we doing? Hello. Great. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> or good evening to you guys. <laughs> what about Warren you guys too? Uh, uh, Barry's here too. <laughs> girls thanks a mil for joining us today uh, it's very early over where you are by the way it's it's, it's awful it's so early it's, it's, <laughs> it's not that bad but I, I, i'm still sleepy <laughs> i like to wake up early and do nothing and have plenty mm. of time to like just do whatever i want and not feel rushed so and I usually wake up about 10 minutes before I have to leave. That's my jam. <laughs> and that's why she is always late. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be very energized by the end of this show. Ross, take it away, bud. Uh, absolutely. Um, guys, uh, well, I'll start with yourself, Angela. Um, where did the idea of the Two Straws podcast come about? And then how did you end up on Five Pass like ourselves? Um. Well, uh I think we had just been hanging out a lot, training together, and we would always go and watch fights together and talk shit. <laughs> and, um, you know, the conversations would get kind of funny and kind of wacky. So we would always say, man, we probably could do a, a, a decent podcast just doing this, just having a drink and talking about fights. And uh, eventually we finally did it. And the first couple were a little sloppy. <laughs> we had a little too many drinks, or at least I did. And uh, and that's kind of where the, the idea of two straws came from, because you get two straws in your cocktail, but also we're two straw weights. Um, so that's that's where the name idea came from. And I think a fan sent the idea to us too but uh yeah it, after that it kind of took off we uh we put out a bunch of episodes a few years ago but then it became a little too much because i was going crazy with the editing and stuff and uh yeah once we got the fight pass offer then it made it a little more enticing because now you're getting paid to do it but also we could just do like a, a regular podcast format and not go crazy like i was trying to do like a blind date meets uh daily show type <laughs> i was very optimistic <laughs> about what i could do while being an active fighter but um yeah i have to thank jessica for the fight pass thing because i had totally just been like ah we'll, we'll we'll do it later when we get an editing team and then she was able to get that contact with the fight pass people and and now we're on fight pass Absolutely, absolutely love it. We're, we're delighted to be on Five Pass with you guys. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, how difficult it is to ru run a podcast and be a full-time uh, athlete as well at the same time? Um, I mean, anything can be challenging if you, you know, have enough, like, things going on, but it's just making time for it. Um, and it's always a fun time doing a podcast with Angela, so it's not work at all. You know, we have a good time. Um, time flies by. We never have, you know, dead space or anything like that. So it's it's more of a fun project for me. I don't look at it as as work, really. Just hanging out with my bestie. <laughs> no, that's, that's did, did you ever here. think? Did you ever think uh, being on the Ultimate Fire would lead lead to having a best friend for life? <laughs> no, I didn't. So I I was not the kind of girl power girl at all. I had played you know team sports my whole life. And, you know, I knew that there was, you know, a really cool connection between, you know, female athletes and stuff like that. But when I got into fighting, I didn't um, have a lot of females to train with. And it really wasn't uh, the friendliest atmosphere. It was more competitive than anything. And so when I got into the house, yes, we were competing against each other. But it was also really cool just to meet all of the different personalities. And we're all, you know, striving for the same goal. We want the same thing. So we have this level of understanding and, you know. Uh, empathy, compassion for each other. Uh, well, some of us, some of some of the girls were 
awful. I never want to see them again. <laughs> They're coming on next. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I made some like really amazing friends, uh, Angela being one of them, uh, Beck being another, uh, Alex Chambers, Justin Kish. Like, um, there were just some really amazing people on that show. And I got to, you know, live with them, get to know them and made friends up with them. No, that is, that is pretty cool. Um, Andrew, was the Ultimate Fighter for your season, did you feel there was more intensity when you were there just because there was a belt on the line at the end of it? Uh, nah, I think it would have been just as intense either way. I think the intensity came from there being 16 girls in the house. Like, that was intense. Like, you can be, put anything on the line. You could just be living in a dorm room with 16 girls, and that shit's going to get crazy. So, um, I think, I think, uh, there are a lot of strong personalities there and I'm, I'm kind of more of a passive type person. Like I'll sit back and watch, watch the drama unfold and just try to be on everyone's good side because I'm not about like drama or anything. So I was able to avoid most of it, but uh, there were some serious little cat fights going on and not even cat fights, like getting punching each other, but more like passive aggressive, <laughs> passive aggressive slights daily that just, ooh, just would make you think people are evil. So uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was an interesting, what do you call it? Like an interesting, uh, just, study like a social study of, of what a bunch of girls do when they're stuck in a house together i say that season after people watching this is going to get way more views as well hey <laughs> <laughs> tough 20 <laughs> oldie but goodie <laughs> melendez versus pettis if i'm not mistaken with the coach that's fine. yeah 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 it did like i i, I can't remember when it's the last time I watched a tough start, a uh, true start to finish. But like, I definitely remember watching that one because, like, obviously there was the vested interest of the winner would become champion. He, he, he was uh, touching now. Uh, Carlos Barza is back champion uh, at Strawberry. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think uh, of Carlos Barza regaining the gold? Obviously, the fight wasn't uh, one that will uh, be rewatched numerous times. But what do you make of her getting the gold back? I mean, I thought it was really cool. I I thought that, you know, for her to, to go in and, you know, kind of come full circle um, was a really cool experience, especially for her. You know, she's later in her career and she's still improving, still, you know, striving. And I thought it was an awesome, you know, kind of storyline. The The fight was not great. We can all agree <laughs> on that. <laughs> but, but she was trying. She was trying her best. I think, I think you might be better off calling that one the contest, uh, Jessica, as opposed to the voice. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that's it was a, that's a faint match. It was like a don't flinch match. Like <laughs> I would like to know like, flinch, statistically if that fight was like the least punches landed like in the history of <laughs> MMA. It, it probably in strawweight history definitely yeah, yeah. in strawweight history because we scrapped Fra for the most part francis and ganu <laughs> against um derek lewis is definitely up there in in competition for that one as well but uh mm. or girls, uh, girls yeah but did that I... go all the rounds yeah it did oh, derek lewis yeah. won a decision i think yeah oh okay yeah because it was Without... one of those fights where you know someone has to get knocked out and then anytime there's a fight where someone has to get knocked out it goes to the decision they sat on each other <laughs> laid on each other and hugged <laughs> girls I, just, I have to find out as well obviously you just met at the ultimate fighter but um what has been like the biggest difference now you've seen in each other like to date since the ultimate fighter uh angela we go ahead with yourself first uh the difference in myself or the difference in not a difference in jessica <laughs> the, the oh. of jessica oh, since the be noise be noise you have oh, to see her again. <laughs> this is a pg this well, is pg She's very judgy about me being on time or not. She's I'm only late around Jess. I think it's her fault. I think she stresses me out because I know <laughs> she's going to judge me if I'm late and then it makes me later. So <laughs> Look, isn't there real accountability of... in friendship, isn't there? Hey. Accountability is love. <laughs> hey. I was having the best dream. Like <laughs> You guys would have also been late if you were having this dream. It was awesome. Um <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think uh, a big part of Jessica's I guess evolution 
would be her confidence because I, I don't know when she was on the show, she was very quiet. She was very to herself. Um, and, uh, I don't know. She was just calmly working her way through all these girls. And when she got to the Carla fight, I really felt like she could have won that fight if she was just a little more confident and striking um, a little more confident in like the fact that Carla wanted nothing to do with her ground game, you know, and uh, I even screamed something from the sidelines, even though I had nothing to do with Jess's team, like throw this thing. I forget what I said. And she threw it and it landed. And I was like, yo, this bitch can strike. Like if she had some more confidence, in it then she'd be winning this fight um so flash forward to today uh even that last war that jess was in her boxing looked amazing like she was landing punches she bloodied the girl's face up and uh and she even landed some clenched knees and elbows and these are all things that she was like oh shit i've never done this before and she's always possessed the ability but i think now she just seems a little more confident in doing doing whatever she feels like doing. She's not second guessing herself as much as she might have used to when she considered herself just a grappler. Just buzz her off. Great to touch a moment there. That was beautiful. Ah. Ah, she's she's drinking her iced coffee to hide her tears. <laughs> Jessica, where's the tissues? Um, <laughs> Jessica, what can you say about Angela? What have you seen the evolution of Angela Hill since the Ultimate Fighter? And also, uh, let's see if you can outdo Angela there as well. <laughs> Don't well, fuck that- it up. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusively uh, on UFC Fight Pass. <laughs> The first thing I just want to acknowledge um, that Angela came into the Ultimate Fighter with with one like fight really. Um, she had some Muay Thai experience, but like her MMA experience was was non-existent, and the 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 heart that it took to you know step up and accept that kind of challenge and, and go in there um, and just experience it and and willingness to learn was like really admirable and that is the like a a pattern with Angela that I've seen and that I've noticed and I really admire in her just her willingness to put herself into really tough situations and be willing to you know learn uh whatever that looks like like fails wins whatever it is she is just always willing to put herself like really in the hot seat um to to better herself and that is definitely the pattern that i've seen with her and it hasn't changed and it's something that i just admire about her sometimes you know i'm reluctant to put myself in those tough situations but angela always is i mean she's going to um you know another grappling tournament this weekend she's really dedicated to you know gaining more tools in the sport and even though she's you know fought basically everybody on the roster and like you know just just really willing to compete all the time is is amazing. Aww. In fairness, Baz, between the two of them, they like have literally fought all the straw weights on the roster. Like, <laughs> like, there's, like there's, I think I think maybe it's Wei Li Zhang is probably the only one who <laughs> the two yeah. have fought. And like everyone else, Goodness. everyone else has been ticked off <laughs> off the box. You know what I mean? It's, it's absolutely incredible to see the career you guys the careers you guys have had, and you're still going strong. You're still going yeah. strong. Yeah, exactly. So. The, the OGs yeah. of the game are, are still not to be messed with. Yeah, we still got a lot sure. of fight. <laughs> a lot of fight in these old dogs. <laughs> I know, and to see all of these, like, these, uh, you know, younger, more green fighters, like, you know, age doesn't have anything to do with it, but just, like, younger fighters in the game coming in and, you know, showing what they've got and, you know, just seeing that the sport has grown so much for women is, is really exciting. So I don't see myself slowing down anytime. <laughs> uh, I think that's, I think the UFC can see that as well. And then that's why they put your ex- experience on the UFC fight pass as well with the podcast. So like people get to know more exactly about women's MMA and MMA in general. Uh, but the two years do have fights up and Jessica, your fight is coming up first. It's going to be on October 1st. And you're taking on Tabata Rishi. Uh, you're in fight camp right now. How are things going before we get into it? Things are going good. I was just talking with um, Angela last night when we were uh, filming an episode of our podcast. <laughs> like this short fight notice thing is um, new for me. 
I've only experienced it once in my career and that was, you know, years ago when I was still finding it out of weight. Um, so just the, the emotions, the training sessions, everything is just really consolidated and intensified. And yeah. so um, last week I was, I was definitely just like feeling all the nerves, feeling all the, the aches and pains from camp and tomorrow will be, you know, two weeks out. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited and really nervous and, you know, but I have like the best person in my corner for that because this lady takes all fights on whatever notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I heard, uh, Kevin Holland took the blueprint off under the hill and he, he's getting he some credit did. for it. Yeah. He did. <laughs> did. <laughs> he totally did. No, um, it, it, I personally believe that short notice fights have a lot less stress attached to them. And a lot of times that could lead to you performing better because you, you aren't as scared, you know, you're not as like cautious in the fight. You're more willing to take risk because, Hey, you weren't even supposed to be making money today. And now you you have the privilege of jumping in there, jump in line, you know, and getting able, being able to uh, get in someone's face and, maybe even take their win bonus. So I always like short notice fights because it's, it's kind of a win-win for the person coming in uh, without, without preparation. Um, but if you're always training and I know Jess was training, then it's even more exciting because you're like, Oh, I did all this work and now I get a fight. It's like a reward, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Angela, you're just coming off a win yourself and you're also booked in as well on December 3rd. Yeah. It's the revenge tour, this one, isn't it? Is this the revenge tour? The Two Straws Revenge Tour? (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's it's weird that that happened, right? But um, I feel like the the biggest prospects they're like throwing them at us you know because a lot of these new girls uh that just mentioned earlier a lot of them suck like a lot of them (laughs) would get destroyed if they fought someone like us because you know we have so much more experience than them and you can see the greenness like a lot of them need to fight each other before they graduate to fighting you know veterans people with names people with numbers by their name so uh, like loopy for instance she graduated from that she went on a killer run after she fought jess and then they're like okay let's throw her another veteran see how she does against her and then i beat her so i i think that's kind of the uh, matchmaking idea behind it and me and jess just happen to be you know there waiting for fights <laughs> the two <laughs> veterans with the names and uh and now i'm getting to cody next so they're gonna see if she can go to that next level so it does it is a little annoying feeling like a gatekeeper but i do feel like fighting girls who don't have that experience on me. And this is a new thing. Like before, uh, maybe even like two years ago, most most people had more experience than me or had been fighting longer than me. But now I'm finally getting to fight people who I have more experience in. And it shows. Like I'm able to... Uh, I'm able to play my game better against them and stuff. So I'm excited about this Dakota fight just because, you know, she does have the experience, but she hasn't been fighting at the same level that uh, me and Jess have been. Uh, so it should be a fun one. You girls have, have been there for a long time and you've seen the evolution of women's MMA in the UFC and like throughout like the world. Like if you were to be um, an agent, or I'm sure there's other girls in the gym that are just, that are just um, getting into the pro scene, like what sort of direction would you give them? Like how many fights would you recommend or is there a platform you recommend they go on to before they obviously want to reach the UFC heights? Uh, For me, when I first started, there was no amateur organization. There was just not a thing. So my first experience with MMA was a pro fight. And for for me, I see the value in doing amateur fights, the grappling tournaments, um, just doing different types of amateur competition so that you really like figure out what kind of fighter you are. You have these, you know, tools that you don't really know how to use yet. You don't really know like exactly like who you are in there. Yeah. So I think the amateur uh, circuit is a really great way to gain experience and I mean, if you're doing amateur fights, you can, you know, you can fight them kind of like uh, amateur boxing. You could do amateur boxing every weekend. It's like a sparring match, Um, grappling tournaments every weekend kind of thing. So I would just um, encourage up and coming fighters to stay amateur 
for, you know, several, several fights, several years um, at that and just really get all that experience and grow into your own. And when you get into the pros, you can, you know, just, you know how to use everything. When I started fighting, um, I went into an MMA gym and they just gave me all these tools. They're like, okay, here's a submission. Here's a jab. Here's a kick. Just go, go do them. You know, and I really didn't know how to set anything up. I was just, (laughs) I was just going, no, really. And I had to learn like, you know, you at go, a yeah. pro at a pro level. So that was a huge challenging and our, a huge challenge. And if I had the opportunity to go amateur and really build my resume and build my experience, I absolutely would. What about yourself, Angela? Would you have any uh, suggestions? Also, are you, are you aware of the like IMAF scene as well? The what scene? IMAF. I-M-M-A-F. What is that? It's basically um, uh, each country... <laughs> is sort of amateur federation uh america have one uh, uh yeah, did they amateur. just start i uh, i think i think that's the thing vicky did right do they have like overseas uh yeah. fights and people get flown out and there's a person from each country that type of thing yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's sort of the thing it's sort of a, a person in each way class yeah okay i am familiar yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, just <laughs> bigger over here. In Ireland, Ireland is uh, really, really big. So we, uh, we did not have that when I was coming up. Like, because uh, my first, I went pro. I think 2014 is or no, two, yeah, I went pro in MMA in 2014, and there was there was no option for amateur fights, especially because I had uh, 16 Muay Thai fights at the mm. time. So no one wanted to fight me who could have fought me. Um, And uh, by the time I like the tough thing was was around like rumors floating around that they were doing our weight class. Then I was just like, okay, let's just go pro. And oh, wow. (laughs) Thank you. I got breakfast. (laughs) Let's just go pro and um, and see what happens. So now there's definitely more stuff out there. Like I'm (laughs) like that. I'm F. And, uh, you know, during COVID, too, a lot of girls were forced to go pro for the same reason. There just weren't any fights, weren't any uh, fight nights for amateurs Mm. at the time. Um, So I think. If you get stuck in that situation where you had to go pro early, just make sure you're not rushing it because that's what I did. I I rushed it. I was like, Let, I want to fight the best right now. I'm going to knock everyone out. And I was very unaware of how hard it is to knock people out when they're grabbing for your legs 24-7, <laughs> you know? So it, there was a lot of learning that I had to do that I – I didn't realize yet. And I was like, oh, well, I'll be fine. Like I've gotten this far, I'll be fine. And then I was humbled really quickly. So I would say to any young fighters out there who, you know, they might've gone pro, they might've won a couple fights, but if you're, if you're still finding holes in your game, keep fighting those fights on the lower level, because once you go, into the UFC or Bellator or PFL or anything that's a bigger promotion, you could be fighting the champ very soon. You know, you could be fighting the champ your your second fight in the UFC, like Jessica. You know, so uh, so you have to be ready for that level of competition. You can't really learn by getting good matchups once you're in the UFC, because it's very rare that they do that for an athlete. Like it's very rare that they're like, okay, we're going to build her up. Um, So that's what I always tell people who are pro, but they're still pretty green. I'm like, dude, just keep trying to get that, uh, that experience outside of UFC, because once you get in here, it's a chop a block. You can lose once and they'll cut you just because they're like, eh, we're not really feeling your performance. So, um, so yeah, even if you go pro, there's still a lot of learning to do before you get into a big promotion and the big promotion call could come pretty quick too. Like they can call before you're ready to go. Sometimes it's better to say, no, not yet. Yeah. Baptism by fire in the UFC rarely works out well. <laughs> Definitely. What's that? B- baptism by fire rarely works out. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, for sure. I think GSP is the only one that that managed <laughs> to be successful. Is yeah, there a, also is is there any girls in the scene in America or throughout the world that you see coming up that people should definitely keep an eye out for? 
Um, well, uh, my training partner, Jenna Bishop, she's just a super athlete on the ground. Um, and her ground is so scary that she's been rocking people in her fights with her, with her hands. So that's the one I say to look out for. Um, there's a few, uh, we, we got to work with, uh, Sumiko who is in Bellator. She's fighting, um, I forget her last name, but she's fighting in Bellator, um, in a couple weeks against another friend of ours, but she's really also a really good, uh, jujitsu girl really has a couple knockouts on her record. So that's another one, um, that people should look out for, but I'm trying to think. Yeah. Anyone? <laughs> No, for me, it's, it's a, it's hard to think of, you know, someone who's like the big next thing, because in MMA, like styles make fights and, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a tough fight for everyone. So while, you know, they can be really great on a, on a lower circuit fighting people that have less experience and, you know, are, are still, you know, trying to figure out who they are as a fighter, they can look really impressive, but then when they get up to the big shows, they end up falling flat. So I just, um, you know, there, there's a lot of females coming up getting that experience. And when they get into like a bigger show, like an Invicta or a Bellator UFC kind of thing is when I'll start paying more attention um, to see how they do with a little bit more even of a matchup. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the thing um, that has happened in women's MMA, as you alluded to earlier, Angela. I think sometimes maybe the call does come too soon for some of them. Um, if they pick up a few wins on the regional scene, they could be three or four and zero, and then next thing you know, they're in the UFC, and there's no hiding then. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and there's like if you look at someone like Paddy Pimnett who turned down the UFC, I think twice before he said he was ready, and now like yeah, he's doing very very well. So it it is a thing that it's very hard to turn down the UFC when they do come calling, but like sometimes you have to do what's best for your career in the long term because. Mm -hmm. uh, Coming in and getting turf back out very quick uh, doesn't make it that easy to get back there. Oh, for exactly. sure. And I mean, it's it's still kind of a it's still a, a trend now. And I I'm not mad at it. It exists for a reason. It exists in all kind of combat sports. Is people are you know managed well and they are you know kind of guided to success, which I'm not mad at that. I think you, you should care about your fighter and it's an investment and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, um, but there has to be some sort of, of challenge before you get into the big show and just to make sure that you're like really, really ready for it because they're like, we've all said, there's just no, um, there's no hiding once you get to the big show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But ba Baz, there you have a two absolute legends of the game. You know, we just, discussed... it's, it's very what? wise words from the two girls. It's like, and I expect nothing less from the two straws. Um, <laughs> as it, absolutely. As I, as I said earlier, Jessica Penny will be back in action on October 1st to be shouting her out because uh, she's part of the UC Fight Pass team. And Angela is back on December 3rd. But girls, just before yeah, we wrap yeah. things up, um, is there anything you want to tell the people at home and on UC Fight Pass uh, what to expect from the two straws podcast? <laughs> uh, go, go, Jess. Take it away. <laughs> I we mean, need exclusives here, Jessica. We need exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I just want to say how happy I am to be a part of the fight. I'm so distracted with you eating. Um, but it's good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> um, I'm just I'm really happy to be a part of the the Fight Pass podcast team and family. I think it's a really awesome opportunity. So make sure to tune in and check us out for some girl talk, fight talk, little shit talking you know, all mixed into one. <laughs> <laughs> and and thank you so much for everyone's support. We have a lot of fun doing what we do. There you have it, Basel. We talk the origin of the friendship, the ultimate fighter, their up and coming fights, um, advice for future MMA stars, two of the best in the business, Anja Overhill Kill and uh, Overkill Hill. I think I said that wrong the first time. <laughs> and Jessica Penny, uh, the Two Straws podcast. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Um, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell to not miss another energized show. If you're watching on Fight Buzz, give us a favorite. Give the girls a favorite. Actually, head over to their YouTube channel as well, the Two Straws, and give them a subscribe as well. They are yeah. absolute legends. We love them. And as always, stay, stay energized. energized. Energize show up the Irish.
been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.